there was uh, a really interesting email that the House committee unredacted <laughs> here. And I mean, I just pulling up this image because yeah. this is just an amazing redaction uh, that many <laughs> journalists were trying to get for a long time. The House committee was able to get it. You know, the unredacted version says, folks, the call with Jeremy Farrar, welcome trust, redacted. Happy to chat with any of you about this. Best regards, Tony. That's what we got out of that. The, the unredacted material is actually fairly interesting. I'm going to zoom in here. Um, he's talking about these discussion, these early discussions that he had with Anderson and the team, and um, that they had the suspicion that uh, there, you know, it had been manipulation, which was heightened by the fact that scientists in Wuhan University are known to have been working on gain of function experiments to determine molecular mechanisms associated with bat viruses adapting to human infection, and the outbreak originated in Wuhan. So. Right there, beginning of the pandemic is Fauci laying out that he knew about the gain of function experiments in Wuhan. He knew this was a possibility. He also knew um, about these studies that had occurred there. You mentioned Ralph Barrick earlier. This is one of the famous studies, which is a collaboration between uh, Xi, who was the head of the Wuhan Institute of Virology, and Ralph Barrick, a major researcher at uh, UNC, I believe. And um, in this study, they um, uh, created a, a chimeric virus from a bat coronavirus in a mouse adapted uh, SARS-CoV backbone. So they created exactly the kind of like prototype you would expect in this, this kind of research. And here's the kicker, the acknowledgements Research was supported by grants from the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease and National Institute of Aging uh, and the U.S. National Institutes of Health. So Collins and Fauci's agencies. This is a January 27th email where um, Fauci is being alerted for the first time that his agency sent money to uh, uh, EcoHealth, which is the group that was you know, collaborating with uh, the, the Wuhan Institute of Virology on this research. So very early on, he was aware that these were issues that were, were in the air. And so in light of all that, I want to play kind of the, the famous back and forth clip between uh, Anthony Fauci and Rand Paul, where he puts this question directly to him. And you know, it, it got a certain reaction at the, at, at the time, uh, but now that we know more, uh, I'd just like people to, to see it again, maybe in a new light. So let's, uh, let's pull up that clip. This research matches, these are Dr. Ebright's words, this research matches, indeed epitomizes, the definition of gain-of-function research done entirely in Wuhan for which there was supposed to be a federal pause. Dr. Fauci, knowing that it is a crime to lie to Congress, do you wish to retract your statement of May 11th where you claimed that the NIH never funded gain-of-function research in Wuhan? Senator Paul, I have never lied. You want to microphone. Your microphone. Senator Paul, I have never lied before the Congress, and I do not retract that statement. This paper that you are referring to was judged by qualified staff up and down the chain as not being gain of function. So what was, let you me take, finish. You take an animal virus and you increase its yeah. transmissibility to humans, right. you're saying that's not gain of function? Yeah, that is correct. And, and Senator Paul, you do not know what you are talking about, quite frankly. And I want to say that officially. You do not know what you are talking about. Let's okay, you. All right, it's, it's official. He does not know what he's talking about. What's your reaction to that, uh, Matt Ridley? Well, um, uh, uh, if you go back to that exchange, there is a sort of justification for what Tony Fauci is saying. It's not a very good one, but it's, it's one that he was clinging to, mm -hmm. which is that there are various definitions of gain of function, and the specific definition in the U.S. funding issue is that you improve a human virus 
not an animal virus mm -hmm. to make it more infectious to humans, right? That was that's the the, the angel on the head of the pin that he's mm. that he's dancing on. But um, as you say, then why was he using the phrase "gain of function" to describe this work months earlier uh, mm -hmm. in that email? And if you can just pull up that um, uh, hu hugely redacted email again, yeah. it's okay. pretty clear to me because that email doesn't say anything terribly interesting apart from that. It's pretty clear to me that the reason for redacting that email under the Freedom of Information Act, um, uh, uh, the reason for redacting the whole email was to save Anthony Fauci's face after that exchange with Rand Paul. Hmm. It's hard to believe that there was any other reason for doing that. Yeah, uh, It's certainly not to protect sources or to um, uh, uh, not invade the privacy of someone else or, you know, that kind of thing. The, 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 the legitimate excuses for redaction are not there. This was a political redaction of an email in view of that exchange that had already happened. Could I bring up uh, someone whose name you mentioned earlier in passing, Ralph Barrick? You mentioned he's a very important and uh, you know accomplished uh, researcher who seems to be you know on the periphery here. What can you tell us about the the person of Ralph Barrick and his importance to this conversation? Well, Ralph Barrick is probably the premier coronavirus uh, researcher in terms of his ability to, to manipulate these viruses. He developed several techniques, including this reverse genetics technique, which is essentially a way of, as it were, going from a sequence that you want to a live virus. Um, he developed the uh, so-called no -um technique, which is named after a biting midge that you don't um, see because it's so small, uh, which is a, effectively a way of... Uh, altering the genes of coronaviruses in such a way that you don't leave any scars, any joins. Um, uh, he was really the, the person who was doing spectacular new work on coronaviruses. He had an idea about how to develop uh, vaccines in this area, etc. But he's working mainly on a, this, these obscure coronaviruses that nobody's terribly interested in. And then along comes SARS-1 in 2003, and suddenly it's a much bigger deal. And then MERS, uh, and uh, suddenly coronaviruses are of great interest to the world. Uh, so when the Xi Li lab gets involved in coronavirus research because they basically are hunting down the origin of SARS-1, is where, how they start... Um, and then they want to get into much more molecular work. They want to learn from Ralph Barrick. But he doesn't have access to SARS like coronaviruses because there are no uh, horseshoe bats in North America and all SARS like coronaviruses live in horseshoe bats. Uh, so they come to an arrangement that Xi Zheng Li will supply some of the uh, viruses that he needs to work on if he's going to work on SARS like coronaviruses in exchange for her learning some of the techniques of reverse genetics and genetic manipulation from him. So although both their names are on that paper, that Minachery's uh, paper, um, uh, very, very important and significant sort of groundbreaking paper in 2015, mm -hmm. none of that work on that paper was done in, in Wuhan. It was done in North Carolina. But following that paper, the Xi Li lab, led by Ben Hu and Peng Zhou, is rapidly trying to catch up with um, Ralph Barrick uh, by uh, emulating his techniques. And one of the most important documents um, that we haven't talked about yet, and which is the one that really persuaded my co-author Alina Chan and myself to come off the fence, uh, the so-called diffuse proposal mm -hmm. was a request to DARPA in the Pentagon for money to do work on SARS-like coronaviruses that would include inserting furin cleavage sites into them for the first time. Mm -hmm. And that work was to be done in North Carolina, right? But the proposal was turned down. And the partners to that request were the Wuhan Institute of Virology. 
uh, Ben Hu's name is on it, but so is Xi Zheng Li's. So it's pretty obvious that when that was turned down in 2018, for, work, for, for that experiment to be done in North Carolina, it's not pretty obvious, but it's definitely possible that the Wuhan Institute of Virology said, well, we'll go ahead and do the same experiment in our lab with all our funding from the Chinese Academy of Sciences. We don't need that grant to do that work. Yeah. Indeed, they may have already started to do it because uh, the, the proposal has some very specific things in it that, l that read like the kind of thing you say when you apply for a grant for work you've already started. And so one plausible reason why Fauci, Collins et al. might not want people looking too closely at this or dwelling on this is, well, let's not look too closely at the fact that we were that, you know, our agencies were funneling money to this sort of research that maybe we did not directly fund the creation of this virus in a lab, but kind of like bootstrapping the technology and then like exporting it over to China where it's like completely unsupervised. Yeah. Um, that's yeah, kind of the overarching con like perception right. that they don't want out there. And Ralph Barrick has played a very interesting and quite canny role in, in the debate because uh, he did not put his name, he didn't join that conference call, he didn't put his name to the Proximal Origin paper, he didn't put his name to the letter in the Lancet. He was asked if he would and he said, no, it's better if I don't. Um, uh, and he has given one or two interviews, not very many, uh, but he gave one in, in 2021 that indicated that he still, that he, he thought it was possible that this thing might have come from a lab. So I think he's, I think he's well aware mm -hmm. um, that the research that he developed, but that was then um, taken on in Wuhan, uh, could have led to the creation of this virus. Uh, mm. And, uh, he, I mean, I'm sure he will deny that that's what, what he thinks happened, but I think he's aware that it could be what's happened. Um, and and he is really a very critical uh, person. Now, interestingly, there's, a, there's an exchange between Anthony Fauci and uh, a congressional committee in which he... Uh, says something like, I don't know if I've ever met Ralph Barrick. Um, hmm. Well, we now know that they actually met very early in the pandemic to discuss wow. coronavirus biology. So, Boy, this is starting to sound like, uh, you know, conversations about communist infiltration in the 1950s <laughs> or something. I mean, there's a lot of skullduggery going on. Can I ask, in, in your opinion, is Anthony Fauci, and I, I don't know how to put this, so, uh, you know, uh, uh, felicitously, so I'll just do it kind of bluntly. Is he deluded or is he corrupt? Is he covering his ass or does he really believe, you know, that he understands what happened and he needs to push the conversation in that direction? I would say to that, never underestimate the human capacity for self-deception. Um uh, Anthony Fauci is the highest paid federal employee, or was, until uh, he left the job. Uh, he's been in that role for something like 30 yeah. years. That's extraordinary, isn't it? I mean, right. uh, I, yeah, he's I, like the J. Edgar Hoover of infectious disease. He's the J. Edgar yeah. Hoover of infectious That's a very good line. Um, and, uh, and, and his role was immensely strengthened and made more imperial, if you like, in the wake of the anthrax events right. of 2001, when he was effectively made part of the, um, uh, 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 when he was made the sort of czar of the bioterror defense mm -hmm. um, research establishment. Uh, so he's, 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 you know, he's nominally under Francis Collins at the National Institute of Health, but that's not the way it mm -hmm. works. Um, uh, he's a, he's been an enormously powerful individual, mm -hmm. controlling an enormous amount of funding. He's very articulate. He's a fabulous scientist. Did wonderful work on on HIV many years ago, uh, when I first knew of his his work. Um, but I think he has um, uh, f dug himself into a hole here that he's struggling to dig dig himself out of, mm -hmm. uh, and. Um, I wouldn't want to use either of the words you used because mm -hmm. 
I don't know enough to back them up. Hey, thanks for watching that clip from our conversation with Matt Ridley about the origins of the COVID-19 pandemic. You can watch another clip from that conversation right here or the full conversation right here.